Welcome to Unwired Learning. In this video, we're going to talk about doing AC circuit analysis. In particular, we're going to do an example of node voltage method. Here you can see I have a simple circuit with a AC source, uh, a capacitor and an inductor in there, and several resistors. And so this particular problem poses a typical challenge of how to find, say, the output voltage. For this particular problem, what I want us to recognize is that we have a node here between the resistor and the capacitor and with the parallel resistor and inductor. And of course we have our output node, which we do need to write an equation for in order to have enough equations in order to simplify and solve for the voltage out. When conducting node voltage method for AC circuits, it's actually very similar to that of just simple DC resistive circuits. The only thing that we need to keep in mind here is that we have impedances instead of resistances. And because of that, we're going to include the impedances for things like our inductor and our capacitor. Let's label this left node as node 1. And let's label the right node as node 0 to correspond with the fact that we're calling it V out. Now let's go ahead and write our node equation for node 1. Starting with our left 2 ohm resistor, we can write our first term of our node voltage equation for node number 1. For this, we have V1 minus 12 angle 30 divided by 2 ohms. And for our second term, we're going to have V1 divided by 1 ohm. Then we have V1 divided by our inductance. But in this case, we're going to do the impedance of the inductor. So we have plus V1 divided by J2. And our last current is V1 minus V out divided by minus J for the capacitor. And all of that equals zero. Before we write our next node equation, let's go ahead and simplify this by collecting our V1 and V0 terms. For the V1s, we have a 1 half, we have a plus 1, we have a 1 over J2, and we have a minus 1 over J. For our V0s, we have simply 1 over J. And we can't forget the supply 12 angle 30, which is divided by 2. So we can write that this equals 6 angle 30. When we look at this equation, we can see that we have a denominator of J2 as our largest value in our denominator. And that value works for doing a simplification of this equation. So if we multiply both sides by J2, we will significantly reduce the complexity of this equation. Distributing out that J2, we get V1 times 1 plus J2 plus 1 minus 2 plus V0 times 2 equals J2 times 6 angle 30. Before we proceed any further, it would be useful to convert our 6 angle 30 into rectangular form. Doing this the long way, of course, we can use our sine and cosine expressions for the x and the y, or the real and imaginary parts. For this, we could say that the real part, x, equals 6 cosine 30, which equals 5.196. And the imaginary part, y, equals 6 sine 30 which happens to equal 3. So simplifying all of our terms in our equation, we get V1 times minus 1 plus J3 plus V out times 2 equals minus 6 plus J 10.39. Now let's go ahead and find a second equation at node 0. For this, we can see that we'll have V0 minus V1 divided by minus J1 ohm and V0 divided by 1 ohm equals 0. Combining terms, we would get that V1 divided by J plus V0 times 1 minus 1 over J equals 0. Now, if we multiply both sides of this equation by J and then isolate our V1, we get that V1 equals V out times 1 minus J. Now, all we have to do is substitute this value for V1 into our previous equation, and then we'll have an equation that solely has V0 as our variable. 
which then we can isolate and solve for that value of v0, which of course is what the problem asked for in the first place. So let's go ahead and do that substitution. When substituting for v1, we're gonna get that v0 times one minus j, quantity times minus one plus j3, plus two v out equals minus six plus j 10.39. Now we just have to multiply these two rectangular coordinates together, and we can of course use the FOIL method, firsts, insides, outsides, lasts, and we'll get minus one plus j plus j times three plus three, and then we also have our two over here, and so we'll do plus two, and that will equal minus six plus j 10.39. Simplifying this term here and then dividing it to the other side to isolate v out, we find that v out then equals 0 0.549 plus j 2.05. Converting that back into polar coordinates, we find that we get 2.12 angle 75. Comparing that value of 2.12 angle 75 to our incoming voltage of 12 angle 30, we can see that we had a reduction in voltage, which we would have expected because this looks a bit like a voltage divider, but the inductor and the capacitor also gave us some shift in our angle. We went from 30 degrees to 75 degrees. And with that, this concludes this video of Unwired Learning.